Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. This is chapter 5, Gravity Retaining Wall. We are we already learned up until chapter 4. So this is the new chapter. Firstly, you have to know uh, what is gravity retaining wall. So any structure that is constructed on the surface of the earth will be pulled toward the earth center. Anything, eh? any structure. So maksudnya apa-apa je because of other downward acting force yang dipanggil weight of the structure and also other uh, gravity uh, acceleration so when its structure is almost or entirely dependent upon upon its weight for stability it may be termed as gravity dependent structure so this is the example of gravity retaining wall, wall. one here you have something that we call it creep wall and this is gabion wall there are so many types of wall, but uh, the one that we're going to learn is um, the masonry wall and also brick wall and reinforced concrete wall. Okay, but it, that one doesn't matter because we're just going to calculate based on the uh, weight of the structure. We need to know what is the failure criteria of retaining wall. It occurs when one of of several limit state is exceed therefore factor f of safety for each of these limits must be determined kalau katakan because dia ada limit state eh maksudnya dia ada factor of safety if let's say the value yang you dapat nanti because you going to you need to calculate the factor of safety berapa factor of safety daripada the calculation of force yang pull you punya retaining wall and force yang stabilize kan you punya retaining wall so berapa you have to calculate that then you will dapat um, the factor of safety. From this factor of safety, you can compare dengan factor of safety yang, man, yang berapa yang selamat. For example, 2.5. So, if let's say you dapat uh, less than 2.5 means wall tu tak selamat. There are five uh, limit states. Overturning, tension in the joints, bearing on the ground, sliding along the ba base and rotation as hip. So we're going to look at one by one. So we have overturning. So the wall will overturn by rotating some point near the toe. Kat sini eh. Uh, if overturn, overturning moment of the lateral force. So this is lateral force. Is greater than the stabilized moment of the wall, width of the wall. This is what will happen. We have toe and heel. For toe, kita biasa panggil dia uh, A. For heel, we call it B. Dia akan rotate dekat A. Means, kat belakang ni, for example, eh, kat belakang ni lah you punya retain material. Anything that you retain, for example, if you retain water, you retain soil, so it's going to be at the back here. A mesti yang dekat depan lah, meaning we call it as toe, and B is heel. So if let's say, force here is too much, you know that from force, Force will turn into movement. When force here is too much, terlampau lebih, terlebih daripada uh, bigger, meaning it's bigger than the stabilizing moment. Maksudnya kat bawah ni pun ada force juga because force daripada you punya uh, weight of the wall. So weight of the wall ni ada force. One dia akan pergi aras ni and another one dia akan pergi macam ni macam ni lah. Dia berlawan. This one is bigger. So your wall will over turn. Sebab dia tak mampu. Dia kan melawan. Dia tak mampu nak nak nak, nak stabilisekan you punya retaining wall. So your wall will over turn. Factor of safety against overturning is at least 2. This is what I call the factor of safety. Uh, FS lah kita panggil. FS is at least 2 eh. Kalau less than 2 perhaps you dapat 1.8, 1.9 meaning your wall will overturn. Okay, tu maksud dia. So, next is tension in a joint. So, if the wall is considered as a vertical cantilever. Okay, so you look at gambar kat bawah ni. Okay. Wall is uh, considered at, uh, as vertical cantilever BC. Superimposed upon the compressive stress induced in the horizontal joint. So, horizontal meaning, for example eh, so, wall yang panjang lah arah sana kan. Tak kisahlah berapa panjang dia. Uh, upon the compressive stress, stress induced the horizontal joint due to the weight of the wall. Kan ada weight of the wall eh. 
akan ada bending stress which will tensile along BC. Okay, you have force here. Okay, so kat sini akan ada uh, bending stress. You punya wall akan jadi macam mana? Lamak dah hilang tu. Okay, ada force macam tu. You punya wall akan terangkat eh. Meaning to say dia akan lifted a little bit like this. And also in brick or masonry wall, this tension may have effect on the opening of joints. This cistern may lead to deterioration of the wall fa fabric. Bila ada forces acting on at the back of the wall here, kan uh, belakang ni akan ada um, bending, stress. Inside here, uh, brick wall atau masonry wall, because you pakai brick and or masonry, so you akan um, join it together pakai mota. Bila you join it together, force ni dia akan deteriorate kan. Uh, any effect, for example lah, sebab you punya retaining wall mesti ada opening. Contohnya you tak piping dekat dalam ni lah. Piping untuk water. Kan you, you selalu nampak kan retaining wall kalau kat tepi-tepi highway, tepi-tepi jalan tu. So normally dia akan ada lubang-lubang kat situ. Okay, so this one adalah untuk water seepage. Nak elakkan water seepage so that what air akan turun. Masalah ni, dia, dia, dia turun lah. So bawah ni ada longkang lah. Macam tu biasanya Tolongkan dia pun turun lagi. So dia akan ambil, dia akan collect water daripada whatever yang you retain at the back here eh. Because there is a opening for example like this one. Sorry, the retaining wall will easily deteriorate because of other force this one. <coughs> yang acting on retaining wall you. And then you ada opening yang ada sambungan-sambungan. Masonry wall you pun bersambung. Using motor and so on. So it will lead to deterioration of the wall fabric and then we have bearing on the ground so the combination of downward acting weight because now they know what weight of the wall and overturning moment will set up okay, a bearing pressure between the base and the ground okay adama okay so much any lah the maximum ground bearing pressure occurs beneath toe, toe A. So, we need toe A. Okay. Failure will occur if applied pressure exceeds the ultimate bearing capacity. You must make sure bearing force ni, kalau you know, bearing stress, sorry. Bearing stress ni is actually stress dekat any joint, any, anything yang connect together. So, ni surface tu. For example, retaining wall and soil. Dia akan ada bearing stress. Wall ni, force daripada the back and also downward weight ni will produce bearing pressure okay because of the other force kat sini so kat bawah ni in pressure we call it as bearing pressure so bearing pressure produced by the wall produced by these two forces ni must not exceed the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil soil ni boleh support as much as 200 kilonewton per meter Square. Banyak ni je. Okay. Kalau lebih daripada value ni. Bearing pressure produced by the retaining wall exceed this one. Meaning this what will happen lah. Okay. It will be fail. Because of pressure but daripada retaining wall you akan transfer pada soil. So kalau soil you tak mampu support. So this what will happen. And now we have sliding. So if the underside of the wall was a smooth and it raised stress on a smooth surface. Bawah ni lah. Okay, smooth here. The wall slide easily along its base. So wall ni akan slide. Okay, macam mana dia slide? Okay, you ada letak, uh, letak force dekat situ. Or we call it pressure here. The wall you akan slide. The wall only slide if the lateral face exceed the frictional resistance. So RC here is frictional uh, resistance okay kalau p more than rc so akan jadi slide d all right and then we have a rotational slip the wall with large amount of the retained mat so retained mat ni meaning to say macam this one lah retained mat ni maksudnya tanah eh okay yang you tahan dekat belakang ni eh. we rotate at center of o sini eh so, ini adalah center of O. If the total moment of the weight of the wall W1 and soil mass ABC 
A, B and C uh, exceed the moment of shearing resistance developed along, along the circular AC. Maksudnya sekarang ni you punya retain mat ni terlampau banyak. Ini akan jadi. On this, on this uh, dia akan rotate dekat center O. So you punya wall akan uh, terbaring. Bukan. Ter, ter ke belakang. Because of tanah yang dekat sini, dia dah terlebih. So dia akan, uh, dia akan slip. Okay. So dia akan rotate dekat center of O. Ni jangan confuse lah. B ni maksudnya bukan B uh, toe and heel eh. Ini masih toe and masih heel. So B ni kat sini maksudnya dia punya, dia nak tunjukkan tanah tu kat mana. A, B and C. Okay. We are done with that. So we're going to look at the lateral pressure and thrust. The lateral force must be resisted by retaining or similar structure. It may result from so you have wind, you have liquid, you have retained granular material. So this one retained granular material sebenarnya soil lah. Angin, air, liquid air lah. And soil. Okay. Tak semestinya air, liquid can be anything kan. But we call it liquid lah. But normally air lah because you going to retain. For example, kalau you ada retaining one, mesti lah you nak retain them. Okay, first we look at the wind pressure. Okay, so we have wind, we have uh, liquid, we have uh, granular material or soil. So intensity of wind pressure against the side of the structure depends on many factors. For example, average wind velo velocity, amount of frequency, blah, 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 blah. So there are so many factors contribute to the, how you going to calculate the intensity of wind pressure. But because it's so hard for you to calculate because there are so many factors so normally we what we're going to do we're just going to assume it to be uniform maksudnya sekarang when we, when i say uniform maksudnya okay for example you have your retaining wall here for example retaining wall ni cross section dia macam ni lah ni cross section you maksudnya daripada apa maksud dia uniform ni so meaning to say Tolong lukis eh, supaya you faham benda ni. Daripada top sampai bottom uniform. For example, kalau kata kan, uh, 10 Newton per meter square. Sama lah, daripada atas sampai bawah. Okay, dia macam UDL. P is unit uh, unit wind pressure. P ni unit wind pressure Newton over meter square. Okay, satu ni tak ada apa. H ni height of the wall. 3 meter, 3 meter lah. Height of the wall. Because kita assume dia sama for the uh, all height of the wall. Just lah. A vertical wall of height 3 meter. So this is H. Is subject to uniform horizontal wind pressure of 1.2. So this is small p. So jangan confuse eh. Because here, tadi you nampak dia ada big p and small P. So big P is wind pressure. Small P is unit wind pressure. Untuk 1 meter square berapa newton tu maksud dia. And then determine the magnitude and position of the resultant thrust per meter length of the wall. We ha you have this formula again. Okay, this is the uh, 1.2 kilo newton per meter square ni dia punya unit uh, pressure dia. Okay, maksudnya setiap 1 meter square 1.2 kilo newton intensity. Alright, darab dengan 3 meters, the height of the wall. So, you dapat 3.6. So, for every 3.6 retaining wall, contohnya retaining wall yang macam ni tadi. Eh. Okay, so untuk setiap 1 meter, 1 meter, setiap 1 meter, per meter eh, setiap, setiap meter lah maksudnya. 3.6 kilo newton. Okay, dia punya wind pressure. Alright. So, position of the re resultant thrust. So, I already, I sebelum ni explain kan. Because of is going to be uniform. Uniform. Sama. Okay. So, position that we're going to take at the punya center. Under centroid dia. Okay, so centroid dia going to be here lah. Betul-betul tengah-tengah. So, bila tengah-tengah, 1 per 2 darab dengan H. You dapat H over 
2 lah. 3 meter height divided by 2 dapat 1.5 meter from the bottom of the retaining wall. Retaining wall juga depan ni lah for example eh. Liquid pressure. So dam and other retaining structure are required to sustain a lateral thrust from the retained liquid. So earth retaining wall may be also be resist hydrostatic pressure due to ground water because of dalam tanah ada ground water juga. Okay, but this one kita akan kira later lah. Okay, ground water punya sebab. Tapi the whatever in liquid pressure that we calculated, that we calculate here, maksudnya um, if let's say you, re, you retain water, for example, yang belakang duduk belakang retaining wall dulu lah. Contohnya macam dam or any other retaining structure yang retain liquid lah. Eh. Two principle of hydrostatic, the pressure at any point of the liquid act uniformly in all direction. Okay, so you have the liquid droplet here, the X semua sama. So the pressure acting at depth H below the surface of liquid is equal to the product of weight per unit volume of the liquid at the depth. Okay, P, the formula here. So P here means liquid pressure. P ni any pressure lah sebenarnya. Okay, but for this formula... Sebab you calculate pressure kan. For this formula lah untuk calculate uh, liquid pressure. How dia dapat formula macam ni. This is your retaining wall. Okay. So it retain water at the back. Okay water. This is them lah. Dia punya pressure distribution going to be like this. Crease uniformly. You menyelam. You buat lah scuba diving or whatsoever. Uh, as the depth increase. The pressure also increase. And we going to assume it increase uniformly. Sebenarnya, okay, value yang dekat bawah ni, berapa pressure yang dekat bawah sekali ni, pressure dia, how you going to calculate? PW darab G darab H. So, this is the value of pressure dekat bawah ni. This is not PW, this is density of water. Ataupun, unit of weight of water darab Bila you kira, okay, bila you nak kira dia punya total pressure dia semua, the whole this thing, so you kena kira dia punya area, area. value kat sini lah sepatutnya. So value dekat sini is uh, density, kalau density of water darab G darab H. Ataupun unit weight of water darab H. So half ni, why half? Because of this is rectangle, you going to calculate the area. Half times PWGH. Okay, ini value kat sini. Okay, so berapa value, ini maksudnya value ni inilah dia kan, panjang ni lah kan. Kalau panjang, value benda ni lah. Okay, and then you need this value. So this is H. Okay, so that's why darab H. Macam you kira area lah. Uh, ah. Okay, setengah, ini B, ini D. Darab B, darab D. Sama lah macam ni. Inilah value dia punya pre liquid pressure. So, sama juga kalau you pakai unit weight atau density because you know that um, untuk tukar unit weight okay, adalah density darab dengan gravity acceleration. The masonry dam of height 6 meter. So, the height of the dam is 6 meter. Retains water on its vertical face. Calculate the resultant hydrostatic Trust acting on a meter length of wall when the water level reach the top of the dam and the water level is 1.8 meter below the top of the dam. This is terus the answer eh. Okay, never mind. So, we're going to uh, lukis dulu. Okay, water written at the back. The first question cakap, the water written uh, at the back is sampai top of you punya retaining wall. You punya H akan jadi 6 meter. So, this is our formula. Tadi kita dah tahu kan? P sama dengan, we have two formula which is half times PW G H darab H. Ataupun, so this is the formula. So, if you notice that formula yang, yang I put here, okay, is this formula. So, half times you need weight of water times H times H. So, H power of 2 lah. <laughs> tak kisahlah H besar, H kecil sama je. So, you need weight of water. Kita kena cari unit weight of water because the question, 
Okay, soalan tadi apa yang dia bagi density. So, density is P dah beliau. You can either use this formula or you can use this formula but you need to convert from density into unit weight. The formula to get the unit weight from density is PW times dengan G. Okay, and then you have to, kenapa I divide kan 1000 kat bawah ni? Because you're going to get the value in Newton. Okay, 1000 darab 9.81, you akan dapat, you akan dapat this value. Okay, so unit dia akan jadi, meter cube ni you abaikan. Okay, abaikan, jangan layan dia ni. So, kilogram meter per second kuasa 2. Okay, ini adalah sama dengan Newton. Okay, per meter cube ni. Jangan kacau. Okay. <coughs> per meter cube jangan kacau. Because this thing adalah dalam unit density. Density nak tukar pada unit weight. So, 1000 kilogram ni je. Meter per cube abaikan because letak on. Meter per cube ni kat bawah ni. Okay, so you just nak convert kilogram ni pergi Newton. So, after you dah convert to Newton, so you need to convert it into kilo Newton so that you dapat dalam kilo Newton bagi seri. So, you dah dapat unit weight of water. So, unit weight of water put it inside the formula. 176.58. Okay, so kilo Newton untuk setiap 1 meter. Maksud 1 meter tu setiap 1 meter. For example, you put it. Tanning wall macam ni. So, setiap 1 meter panjang tanning wall ke, you ke sana lah eh. 176.58. Okay. So, this is for A. And then we have for B. The water level is 1.8 meter below the top of the dam. Okay. So, 1.8 meter. So, <coughs> this is 6 meter height retaining wall. Okay. So, sekarang ni dia cakap. Okay, bukan dia cakap lah. The question state that the water level is 1.8 meter below water level, below the top of the retaining wall. Dah namanya liquid pressure. So, of course lah height ni sebenarnya adalah height of liquid. Okay. Kalau liquid you sampai top, so that's why jadi 6 meter. Okay. So, sekarang liquid. 1.8 meter below the top of the retaining wall. So, meaning 6 meter divided by 1.8. Ah, inilah dia. Berapa value ni? So, inilah height of the liquid. So, sama juga use the same formula. So, use the unit weight of water. Sebenarnya tak ada masalah eh kalau you pakai this formula but don't forget to divide by 1000 because we need the value to be in kilonewton bukan dalam newton eh. Okay, so masukkan je so you akan dapat betul tak jawab. So, 86.524. Okay, again, another question. A masonry wall dam retain water on its vertical face. The wall is as shown in figure 3.7 meter. But water level reach only 0.7 meter from top of the wall. So, kat sini dia dah tolong calculate lah. So, if let's say wall dia 3.7, water level dekat sini. What is the magnitude and the position of the resultant water per meter pressure run of wall? Dia minta magnitude and also minta position. Okay, position macam tadi, macam kita calculate this, dia kat mana the centroid of pressure distribution and the distance from the centroid to the bottom of the wall. Okay, macam kita kira wind pressure tadi. Okay, how to calculate that? I use this formula 1.2 ni ni ni. You need weight of water. Memang 9.81 density. So if let's say not given, you baca di perkataan water kat sini. So, automatic you tahu unit weight dia 9.81 kN per meter cube. Just put it here. 9.81 as a unit weight and then 3 meter height. Okay, because of here, it's already given that ini adalah 3 meter. You dapat 44.145. Hopefully betul lah saya kakit. And then position of the resultant truss. As I explained before, this is your retaining wall. So the pressure distribution going to be like this. Doesn't matter eh kalau you buat macam ni pun boleh. Okay, pressure distribution. 
Sebenarnya kat sini dia punya value adalah unit weight darab H. Itu lah macam tu lah. Macam, macam you kira sebelum ni. Okay so 1 over 2 maksudnya you kira area. Area darab. 1 over 2 times ni H darab dengan H. Dia punya height eh. Macam mana you nak kira position of resultant truss. So where is the centroid? Biasa centroid mesti kat sini kan. So berapa value ni? Sebenarnya 1 over 3 darab. Ish. Macam mana yang dapat sini? So kalau you ada segitiga Obviously kat sini Kat centroid Kat bawah ni biasa 1 per 3 Sebab you, you tengok eh Kat bawah ni area dia lebih besar So centroid dia mesti lebih ke bawah Kat atas ni Area dia lebih kecil So Sini besar Macam nampak eh Sampai sini ujung So dia mesti lebih ke bawah So yang atas ni 2 over 3 lah Sama juga kalau macam ni 1 over 3 2 over 3 1 over 3 times H Height of liquid Height of uh, Water tadi So the water is 3 meter height So it is 1 meter from the bottom of retaining wall So that is the position Next is Pressure due to retained soil and other granular materials uh, Soil unlike liquid and not usually uniform Differences Properties from one layer to another. Tak tak semis the the whole layer of soil bukan dia pada top to bottom jenis soil dia adalah sama. So different properties. If quantity of each of, of such material was steep on the flat surface, it would flown out to form a conical heap. If let's say you are the soil, and then you you let genggam dengan tangan you, and then you release the soil sikit 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 sikit. Okay, dia akan jadi macam ni lah. Soal tu jatuh. Dia akan naik jadi conical heap. A more reliable measure of internal friction of the soil is obtained by testing in soil, testing the soil in laboratory. Okay, kenapa jadi macam ni? Because the, the uh, soil tu sendiri dia ada friction because of each particles dekat dalam soil tu. Dia ada different texture. Okay, dia ber berlekuk-lekuk, bersegi-segi. Different shape and texture. Dia akan um, uh, provide friction resistance pada the soil itself. Because of the other surface resistance kan. <coughs> Jadi there is a friction. So how are you going to measure it? Not, not more reliable dekat dalam lab lah. But other sev several useful theories exist. However, it will be sufficient to consider Rankine's theory. Okay, so we're going to use Rankine's theory. Untuk measure lebih kurang lah the friction yang produced by the the surface of the soil lah. So ini adalah assumption daripada Rankine tadi. So assumption dia cakap materials is incompressible, homogeneous, satu jenis, granular, cohesionless. So bukan uh, cohesive soil lah. This one lebih kurang pasir lah. Pasir is cohesionless soil. That possess internal friction resistant to movement between grains. The if the quantity of such material was steep into flat surface, it would form a conical heap. This is what I told you before. So, dia akan jadi naik macam lah, conical heap. The material within the cone support itself due to internal friction because of other friction between the surface of each particle. The angle of side of cone is known as angle of repose. Okay, ini namanya angle of repose. Ataupun... Kita boleh juga panggil dia angle of shearing resistance. Liquid do not possess internal resistance. Oh sorry. I lupa beritahu. So kita panggil dia as theta. Theta. Liquid do not possess internal resistance to shearing. The angle of shearing resistance for liquid is zero. Okay so liquid tak ada angle of shearing resistance. Because kalau if you pour concrete pour uh, in bekas kapal so it will follow it will actually ikut shape of that particular bekas tu jadi uh, dia tak ada uh, shearing uh, resistance ataupun dia tak ada uh, angle of repose in frictional materials the lateral pressure is at somewhat less than the vertical pressure so in Rankine theories the ratio between the okay, itulah dia is evaluated in term of angle of shearing resistance ni so angle of repose ni lah. So Rankine theory of lateral pressure. Okay. 
So this one for granular material ataupun soil lah. P is equal to half Ka unit weight H times H. So kalau you notice, formula lebih kurang sama. Cuma ada additional Ka kat sini. So Ka kat sini, rankine ni pun juga je lah. So what is Ka? Okay, Ka ni tadi, you nak calculate the friction tadi tu. Maksudnya resistant to shearing tadi eh. You, you look at the formula here, 1 over sine theta. So theta here meaning angle of shearing resistance ataupun angle of repose tadi. Uh, unit weight here adalah unit weight of soil tu lah. Unit weight of granular material or soil lah. K here means height of Soil, granular material. So, for example, you punya tanah sampai sini. This is the pressure distribution. Sama juga macam liquid. Okay, dia segi tiga uniformly increase. Where is the the centroid? The centroid going to be here. Sama lah juga. So, 1 over 3 times H. Kat sini juga dia punya um, pressure distribution centroid guys. Okay, sorry. Tadi I'm talking about the, the formula. This is value of Ka unit weight darab dengan H. How you get the pressure? You kira air radius tengah because of this is triangle times Ka unit H darab dengan dia punya height lah. K darab H. Okay, so if let's say dalam question dia tak bagi unit weight. Dia bagi density macam ni. So, sama juga. Okay. This is density darab dengan gravity acceleration. So, you boleh convert pada unit weight or you can um, calculate terus dalam ni pun boleh juga. But don't forget to divide by 1000 because you need to convert from newton to kilonewton. So, since the PA varies uniformly with depth of region, so the pressure distribution for lateral pressure on AB is triangle. We're going to look at example number 4. Soil weighing uh, 15 kilonewton per meter cube. So this is unit weight of soil. Eh? And having an angle of repose of 30 degrees. So this is theta. Angle of repose. Exerting pressure on 4.5 high vertical force. What is the resultant horizontal force per meter run of the wall? Dia nak cakap memang tinggi soil tu 4.5 sama macam retaining wall itself lah. So this is H. The value of Ka first because this is to calculate the shearing resistance. Ka equal to 1 of 1 minus sin theta plus 1 plus sin theta. Tadi formula tadi ya. Eh. Masukkan the value of 30 degrees as the angle of repose given here 30 degrees. So you get the value of Ka. Atau bila you kira ni you dapat berapa? 1 minus sin 0 0.5. Over 1.5 If I'm not mistaken So sama kan dengan 1 per 3 Ataupun Kalau you calculate directly Maksudnya you calculate You tak buat dalam bentuk uh, Pecahan macam ni You buat dalam bentuk Decimal So you dapat 0 0.333 So make it like 3 decimal places lah We're going to calculate the uh, Pressure due to Retain granular Material So 1 over 2 Times Ka Times unit weight of soil times H. So 1 over 2. So Ka calculated 1 over 3. 15. The unit weight of soil. H is 4.5. The height of soil. So you dapat, uh, I dapat 50.625. Okay, the next question is. A masonry wall with a vertical back 6 meter high retains earth having a density of 19. So here they bagi density. Soil. And angle of shearing resistance of 30 degrees. So, this is theta. Calculate the active lateral thrust theory on the wall using Rankine's theory. Sorry, I tak letak ini fish. You have to calculate the value. Okay, you nampak je perkataan soil. So, mesti ada shearing resistance. So, you need Rankine theory. Here, I convert lah from um, the density. I convert jadi unit weight. Darab dengan gravity acceleration divide by 1000 to convert newton to kilonewton so you dapat 19.228 
Lorentan parameter Q. Kita boleh masuk dalam formula. So if let's say you terus nak pakai formula ni pun boleh. Tak ada masalah. PGH darab H kan. Tak kisah letak H kuasa 2 kat sini pun boleh. H kuasa ni pun boleh. Nak siasa tak boleh. Tak apa. Boleh juga you pakai formula ni. Tak ada masalah. Jangan lupa bagi seri. You boleh pakai formula ni. Sama je. Yang ni I kira asing. Okay. K A. Masukkan unit weight of soil yang you dapat kat atas ni. Yang you convert daripada dia punya density times dengan height of uh, soil. So, you, I dapat 115.368. Kadang-kadang you confuse. Kenapa tiba-tiba I tulis? Kadang-kadang I tulis P. Kadang-kadang I tulis PA. Sebenarnya maksud dia sama saja. PA here means active. Okay. Active lateral thrust. Kenapa nama dia active lateral thrust? Because of, for example, you punya retaining wall macam ni kan. Sebenarnya dia ada dua. Satu passive, satu active. Yang dekat belakang ni kita panggil active. Kalau kat depan ni kita panggil dia passive. Because of dia help to stabilize you punya retaining wall. Okay. The, the retaining wall itself. Because dia duduk kat depan ni. So dia help to push to stabilize the retaining wall. This one nak push it out. This one akan push it inside back. Ha, macam tu lah. So ini this is passive. So sometimes you nampak it is active kat sini. So, normally this is active lah. Because we only learn pasal active lateral thrust sahaja. Right. Hopefully you dah faham that part. So, I masuk pada step wall faces. Dia ada step lah. So, sebenarnya kalau retaining wall you macam ni ke. Seperti dia lah. Nak lupa macam mana pun. Tapi. For example. This is example only. Okay. But step dia dekat bagian yang you retain eh. Kat sini ada retain material. Bukan kat luar. Remember ini A, ini B. This is toe, this is heel. Heel mesti dekat belakang. Macam pakai high heel. Macam tu lah. The lateral pressure is assumed to be act normal to the supporting structure. Therefore the direction of this pressure will be horizontal. Sama je. Macam mana you kira uh, for the yang wall yang I, I tunjuk. Contoh I tunjuk tadi macam ni kan. Straight kan. Doesn't matter the steps sekalipun. Here we have inclined wall faces. Okay but don't confuse. Kenapa macam ni. Okay so sebenarnya ini A. Ini B. Okay terbalik dia lukis. Jangan confuse eh. So ini heel kat sini. Because of retain material is at heel. Okay so material akan duduk behind the heel. Of retaining wall. So ini bagian front side dia. Ni belakang ya. The back side of the retaining wall. Right. So this is L. Bukan satu L. The formula is P pressure is equal to half times uh, PA times L. Okay PA here. You nampak kat sini dia tulis small p. Small p ni bukannya density. Okay, so sebenarnya tadi kalau you present. So, value ni K A H adalah small p. Ini adalah pressure juga. Uh, pressure at that point. Pressure at this point. Kita nak kira total pressure untuk tinggi ni. Betul. So, p here means pressure at this thickened point. Point bawah ni lah. This is small p. Okay, sama juga. Kalau liquid tadi, formula dia setengah nene H kuasa 2. So, ataupun setengah H jarak H kan. Ini adalah small P. Ini semua adalah P besar. This is for liquid pressure. You nampak ada um, small P here. So, small P here means that one lah. Okay, small P sama dengan So, if let's say it retain water. Okay. So, kalau retain water, you need weight of water darab dengan H. This is for liquid eh. And if let's say it retain soil, small p dia adalah soil times H. Oh, sorry. K. Kalau you you kira the big P, maksudnya the total pressure dekat semua tu, pressure distribution semua tu. 
Okay. So, so you kira area dia kan. Setengah darab unit weight water H. So, darab dengan. So, you nampak kat sini PA darab dengan L. L ni adalah sloping height. So, maksudnya mana? Ini. Okay. So, condong ni. Panjang condong ni berapa? Okay. So, darab dengan L. Okay. Sama juga big P for this is setengah darab ke oil of soil darab H darab dengan L juga. Effect of surcharge dah sejam lebih lah. Okay, when the superimposed pressure is applied at the surface of the retained soil, the active lateral pressure is increased by the proportional amount. Okay, superimposed pressure ni apa maksud dia? Okay, you have a retaining wall here. Contohnya superimposed. Retaining wall is very very bare. So, contohnya belakang ni is this soil. Okay, so you pun bina lah satu bangunan kat sini. Bangunan. <laughs> So, this bangunan adalah surcharge. Beban tambahan. Extra. Okay. This is superimposed pressure. Okay. Kalau setakat orang seorang berdiri kat sini. Ni kita tak anggap dia superimposed. Berapa sangatlah loading daripada this particular person. Compared to a building. Okay. Ataupun you letaklah satu bunga kat sini. Letaklah pasal bunga. This is not superimposed eh. This is not we call superimposed pressure because of the dia punya weight tak seberapa. Secharge dia punya uh, ni adalah PA. Okay so sama juga masih lagi pakai KA. Okay kenapa KA? Because of secharge only ada dekat if let's say you retain soil. You retain granular material. Secharge tak ada dekat water. Water is not like soil. Soil dia, let's say you put anything on top of the soil. Dia, soil, tu you, soil tu akan mampat kan. How to say. Kalau water dia akan melimpah je keluar. <laughs> kan. Kalau you letak boat. Boat tu akan float. Dia bukan terus masuk ke dalam tergelam. Dan menjadi satu yang mengganggu dia punya loading kat situ. Tak ada eh. Ini only effect pada tanah saja. So KA times Q. So Q ni is um, surcharge pressure. Okay. And then times dengan H. Okay. H ni height of soil. So the total of overturning moment is the sum of moment of PA and PAS. So if let's say you nanti you kira overturning moment. So you kena kira moment that caused by the uh, pressure due to the soil itself. And then if let's say there is a uh, surcharge ataupun superimposed pressure. So you must include it masa kira overturning moment. So determine the active lateral thrust acting on the rating wall. wall so describe in example 5. If there is also a charge, a surcharge of 20 kN per meter square acting on the surface of the soil. And this is the solution. It is according to the example 5 eh. Because dia bagi surcharge, dia minta total active lateral thrust. So maksudnya termasuk juga dengan surcharge. Uh, pressure due to soil that kita dah kira example 5. So sekarang kita kena kira surcharge so that kita dapat <coughs> total active lateral thrust. We already calculated before. Ka, okay, we know that it is 1 over 3. According to example 5. We look at example number 5. Okay. So kat sini kita dah kira tadi example number 5. We already calculated that Ka equal to 1 over 3. This is according to example number 5. Eh? This is value of Ka. And then Q given in the question. The surcharge is 20 kN over meter square. So this is. Unit of surcharge. Untuk 1 meter square is 20 kilo newton. And then H. According to the question. Example number 5. You you know that the H is 6 meter. H adalah 6 meter. You know, you dapat total of uh, surcharge is, is 4. So 40 kilo newton per meter. Okay, the total pressure active lateral thrust ya. Thrust dengan surcharge. Active surcharge lah maksudnya. So this is according to example number 5. 
115.368 So, nampak sini 115.368 Ini value of PA And then, time, uh, plus dengan surcharge So, you dapat total active lateral thrust So, I'm going to wrap up this So, we finish it here um, Have a good day everyone Bye-bye Assalamualaikum -bye.